in this video session i am going to discuss the solutions to the brain gym algorithm exercises given for sequential logic before you proceed to watch this video be sure you have made an attempt to solve those questions because when i am going to tell you the answers it's always always going to look easy because we have been doing it as i said for the last 10 20 30 years but you are just trying to learn so please make an effort that's how you are going to learn so just to remind you to the extent of you probably getting angry or bored with me i hope you have drawn the test table and tried to verify the answers to the questions asked all right so the beauty of having a test table is you do not need anybody to check your answers you just can understand whether your logic is correct or not by simply going through the test table step by step again please do not post any solutions because it's a waste of your time i am not going to display them at all and a link to this solutions this solutions is going to be into two parts part 1 and part 2 i am going to put a link to this solution also in the question where the brain gym exercise was given in the description section i am going to put a link to this particular exercise so let's try to take a look at the sequential logic problems first so the first sequential logic problem was you were asked to write an algorithm to calculate the length of a rectangle given the area and breadth always or most likely you generally are asked to calculate the area given the length and breadth here i slightly twisted it around to ask you to calculate the length assuming area and breadth are given we all know area of a rectangle is length into breadth so length obviously is going to become area divided by breadth that's why i told you that i am not going to ever give you a value of area as 0 because then it will create different kind of problems or it will give you length as 0 which is kind of meaningless so this is the test table and these are the test values but before i head to the test table and test values let's try to run through the logic a very simple problem so i believe most of you should have attempted and got this correct so the first thing is determine what are the variables you are going to use to find the area of a rectangle they are going to be the variable area l for length and b for breadth i need to ask the user to enter the area and the breadth so user is going to enter the area and breadth once the user enters the area and breadth i am going to directly go ahead and calculate the length as area divided by breadth and then finally in the last step i am going to print length of a rectangle or the rectangle here is l or the length of the rectangle now in order to do a test of this particular logic okay i am going to just run through two test cases so you understand how to go about doing the test and how to work around it so step number 1 area lb since i have not given any value all three of them are going to have a value which is going to be given by the computer memory and computer memory is a random collection of ones and zeros when you are not using it or when you have not given any particular value to that particular memory location so a b and l are just going to have certain random values then what i am going to do here is i am going to read area and breadth so i am going to read 100 and 5 so if you see area is 100 breadth is 5 at step number 2 the length is still unknown at step number 3 i have done the calculation 100 divided by 5 is 20 at step number 4 i am printing the value of length as 20 so i hope this should clarify how you go ahead and check the length of a rectangle now test case 2 looking at 220 and 15 initially again in step number 1 i do not know the value of area breadth and length step number 2 i read the value of area and breadth let's say i read 215 based on the test tables given here i still do not know the value of the length then i come here 215 and length is 200 divided by 15 happens to be 13.33 and in the last step step number 4 i am going to print the length of this rectangle as 13.33 so i believe all of you should have been able to comfortably do this particular problem now let's take a look at the next one all right in the next one what i am trying to do here is 
I am trying to ask you to do a very simple algorithm to calculate the sum and product of two numbers represented in memory by two variable locations a and b. Now, so if you have to take a look at this particular problem, first let's understand what are the variables required. I require one variable a to read the first number, variable b to read the second number, variable sum to store the result of a plus b, product to store the result of a into b. In order to calculate a into b or a plus b, I need to ask the user to enter the values of a and b. So let's say user enters 9 and 11, just an example. Then what I have to do is, first step I'll calculate sum, I'll say sum is assigned a plus b. Then next is prod, prod is assigned a into b. And lastly, I am simply going to print sum is sum and in step number 6, I am printing product is prod. Now let's verify it with one value. If I am able to prove it with any one of these values, you can easily draw a similar test table and test it on your own for other values. So what I am doing here is in step number 1, sum, product, a and b are all empty values. I do not know what values they have. It is depends on the computer what random numbers they get assigned. In step number 2, I have taken this last case, a is minus 5 and b is minus 6. At this stage, sum and product are unaffected, that's why they are still question mark. At step number 3, you will see sum will have changed its value. Minus 6 plus minus 5 is going to be minus 11. Product is still a question mark because we have not come to step number 4. Once I come to step number 4, you will notice that sum is minus 11, product has also changed to 30. Minus 6 into minus 5 is minus into minus is plus, that's why it is 30. Step number 5, it will print sum as minus 11. Step number 6, it will print product as 30. So I believe this should have given you a fair idea of how we worked out these two sequential logic problems. Now what we shall do is, we shall take a look at a problem which was given and I had asked you to find out what will be the possible problem or what do you think is not right with this particular logic. Okay, so let's take a look at it. It's a simple code. I had already shown it to you. So just take a look at this particular code. So here if you see here, Arjun has written an algorithm which prints the result of division of a fixed number. That means he's fixed up the numerator as 100. The user is just going to supply the denominator and it is going to print the result as numerator upon denominator. Result of division is result. So this is numerator is 100, this is denominator, this is result. I read the denominator. User can enter 1, 2, 10, minus 9, 5, 6, so on. Result is numerator upon denominator. Now I say result of division is res. Now I asked you, one question I asked you, you should test for these values and you should tell me, list the reasons if there is any going to be any problem with this code. This code will work in correct in most of the cases, but it will fail in a very important case. Suppose the user enters the denominator as zero, you are going to have the result of this step is not going to be able to be solved by a computer. That's why I told you in an algorithm, you need to give instructions which are clear. You cannot give ambiguous or instructions which have no solution. So this will give you a divide by zero error. So if a user enters zero, then you shall get a runtime error called as divide by zero since the computer cannot execute the instruction 100 by zero. So that is the only major problem with this particular algorithm logic. So please be aware you never attempt to do something by divide by zero or you are careless enough to do something like this particular Arjun gentleman.